Want a dish that your family and friends think was prepared by a four-star chef, with ingredients that are available in every grocery store? Watch this episode to see how it's done. Hi, this is Connie, with another quick and truly tasty dinner recipe that always gets raves. And this is Vince. Welcome to our channel, A Quick Recipe. Today we're going to prepare a pasta dish that is so unique you'd expect it was one of the celebrity chefs that made it. Here are the basic ingredients we'll need, which feeds four to six adults. You can review them again later in the show more section below. Three of the key principles of turning out dishes like a fine dining restaurant are the proper and abundant use of seasoning, particularly salt, the multi-layering of fat, like olive oil, butter, and heavy cream, and properly using heat, sometimes excessive amounts of it, and at times, none at all. We'll be applying those principles in preparing this savory pasta dish. Let's get started. You can use bottled or canned roasted bell peppers, but if you're up to it, this is how you can roast your own. Begin by taking three medium-sized red bell peppers. Cut them in half and core them out. We're cutting them in half so that we don't have to bother turning them while roasting them under the broiler. Take a metal pan that you really don't care about, or wrap a good one in aluminum foil on all sides to protect it from being under the broiler. Lightly but evenly coat the pan with olive oil. That will help the peppers from sticking to the pan. Then lightly coat the pepper's skin with olive oil. It will enhance the roasting and make the skin easier to remove. Take a moment to subscribe to our quick recipe channel and give us a like. It makes it possible to create more episodes for you. After oiling the peppers, they'll be ready for the broiler, which should be set at a lower setting to allow them to roast slowly. Put the peppers into the broiler on an upper shelf and wait until they are slightly charred. For those that have problems digesting bell peppers, it's usually the skin that causes the problem. The trick in removing the skin is placing the still hot peppers immediately into a sealed container or a bowl covered with cling wrap. The heat and moisture from the peppers create steam, making the skins blister and easier to remove. Take one large onion and cut it in half. Then peel it, then thinly slice each half. As you may have noticed, we do as much prepping as possible before starting to cook a recipe. It makes it easier to concentrate on the timing of cooking and not concern ourselves with whether the next ingredient is ready. Coarsely chop three, or depending upon your love of it, four or more cloves of garlic and put it aside. Add extra virgin olive oil to a large deep pan that has been preheated over medium heat. Make sure that the oil covers the entire bottom of the pan. Once the oil comes up to temperature, add the onions. Here's another tip. Lower the pan to low medium heat. Cooking the onions at low medium heat gives you softer onions with a sweeter flavor. That's because the sugars are allowed to break down making the sauce smoother when blended later in the food processor. Then add a good pinch of salt to the onions once they start to take some heat. Continue to stir the onions, allowing them to become lightly caramelized. After the roasted peppers cool down, Take a sharp knife and scrape or shave the charred skin. Don't be concerned if some of the char can't be removed. It will add a bit of smoky flavor. Now chop the peppers into one inch pieces so that they will be easy to liquefy in the blender. As you can see, the onions are fully broken down. Now add the peppers. Add 
Add another good sized pinch of salt. Followed up with your garlic. One teaspoon of sriracha sauce. And two teaspoons of crushed red pepper flake. After working them in, add 3 tablespoons of tomato paste. But make sure at this point, that the ingredients are brought to a point of softening, particularly the garlic. If garlic becomes burnt, it will bitter the sauce. Bring the pan to low medium heat, and add the pint of heavy cream. Be careful if the pan is too hot, we don't want to scald the cream. Keep on stirring the sauce, and notice how it thickens. The entire process will take about 5 minutes. What you're watching is the time lapse sequence of the sauce condensing. At this point, the sauce goes into a blender to smoothen the sauce. Once your pasta water comes to a boil on high heat, add your pasta first. Then add your salt. The rule of thumb for salting pasta water is 2 tablespoons of salt for every quart of water. That's 1 half cup per gallon. Don't forget to stir to prevent it from sticking together. Make sure that the pan has been wiped clean. Take the sauce from the blender and pour it back into the pan. And bring the temperature back up under medium heat. Once the sauce is up to temperature, remove it from the heat and add 3 tablespoons of unsalted butter. This is the second layer of fat, which helps to bring the sauce to fine dining levels, and gives the sauce a glossy appearance. Now add 1 cup of grated Pecorino Romano cheese, that adds the final layers of fat and salt, which is inherent in this cheese. If the sauce were still under higher heat, the cheese would stick to the pan and not blend properly with the sauce. If the sauce thickens, add a little pasta water to thin it out, but add a little at a time to make sure not to water down the sauce. Don't forget to set aside about 10% of the sauce for drizzling at plating time. About 60 seconds before the pasta would be fully cooked, add it directly from the pot to the sauce. Mixing the pasta thoroughly with the warm sauce will finish the cooking process for the pasta. Now it's time to plate this fantastic dish. Drizzle some of the sauce that was set aside. and sprinkle a generous amount of the Pecorino Romano to finish it off. Bon Appetit! Here are a few more tips and recipes that you may find interesting. Also, check out our website, aquickrecipe.com, for more interesting cooking ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time on our YouTube channel, A Quick Recipe.